All right, hello. All right, so uh, on this video, I'm not going to be reviewing anything. No review. Uh, instead, what I'm going to be doing is an instructional job, an instructional kind of deal. Uh, how to remove a clear coat from a mechanical tube mod. Okay, I've threatened to do this one a few times. I've just never gotten around to it. Um, so this is a brass uh, tube mod rogue um, clone that I have reviewed. I'll put a link in the description to the review I did on it. And um, basically it does need, you'll see it in the close up. Um, it is getting a bit uh, gritty kind of looking. The clear coat's not looking the best. But also uh, when I got this, the Illuminati kind of triangle thing, I like it, but it's off center. And also it is only laser etched in. So I always intended to remove it. So that's what I'm going to do. You can do this if your mods are really, really dirty and you don't have um, you know, chemicals and stuff to shine them up. Or if they're really, really patinaed. You can do the same process, it'll clean it, it'll work like that as well. Also, if you just want to remove the clear coat, I remove the clear coat from 99% of all the clones that I buy. Uh, but I even do this to some authentics that I buy as well, just to get that natural brass or copper shine on the mod that I like so much. It's pretty easy to do, it's not difficult. I'm going to be using a battery powered drill, uh, various different grits of wet dry sandpaper, a little bit of water and a few tools in there in the process too. And some polish as well, some metal polish. I'm probably going to be using Brasso. So, um, you can do this if you just want to remove the paint as well. Like if you have a black or uh, if you have a black copper brass or uh, aluminium stainless steel mod, and you just you want it to bring it down to that natural finish and get rid of the paint, maybe the paint stripping. You can do the exact same thing; it'll give you the same results. So, let's do that now. Okay, so what I'm going to use to do this is a battery powered drill. I'm going to be using these uh, drill attachments, right? These are for, um, you could fit uh, mechanical mods on uh, this end of it, right? For spinning on drills, for cleaning and buffing and stuff. And you can actually fit RDAs in the base of these. There's many of these different products out, different companies make them. They are slightly different. I got these ones from this company, Magpie Products. The polish I'm going to be using today is just old uh, bog standard Brasso. And I'm going to be using some 3-in-1 oil. WD-40 will work as well if you don't have 3-in-1. For the purposes of the video, I keep my 3-in-1 oil in this little unicorn bottle. And no, I've never mistaken it for juice and vaped it. And I'm just going to be using some water. And again, for the purposes of this video, um, I have it in this little unicorn bottle. Same reply, I've never mistaken it from juice. I usually carry around a unicorn bottle with water in it um, in my bag. Just if I'm ever out and I'm stuck and I want to clean my coils, I could just use this and, shh, you know, clean them up. So I'm going to be using some water. These uh, little buff pads that you can get for a drill, they come in various different sizes. But um, yeah, depending on the mod you're using, uh, these can get in and clean them in uh, small little places and stuff. I'll put a link in. 180 grit uh, wet dry sandpaper. Also going to be using some uh, 1500 grit sandpaper. We'll also be using some uh, 2500 grit sandpaper. Um, you can find this online, so I'm not going to put links in for, for anything or any kind of car buffing shop or anything. You can get this really fine grit wet dry sandpaper. You're also going to need uh, some microfiber uh, cloths. Um, you can pick up five of these up in uh, Asda, I think, for about one pound fifty. Uh, they're totally not expensive. And okay, so here's a close-up look at the mod before I get to work on it. You can see there what I was saying about it. it's looking a bit tattered there with the clear coat coming off it and all that stuff. But all this is going to come off. The graphics are going to come off as well. And I'm going to use those pads to uh, to try and shine up the top here, where uh, all my atomizers have uh, just kind of damaged the finish on top there. And we will be cleaning the hell out of those threads. And polishing up this button. Some contacts and stuff at the end, I'm gonna be using this uh, six-way um, nail polish buffer. Or, uh, these things are really, really cheap. Um, so you can pick them up, or if I find where I bought them on online, I'll put a link in. They're absolutely brilliant, brilliant to use. They really do shine up contacts. In seconds, you know, in seconds, but we'll get to that at the end. Right, let's get going. <laughs> Do as well as get an old towel or a t-shirt down, because uh, this can get messy and stuff. So clear the table, 
don't have your your phone or your computer or anything beside you there because you're going to get splashes of the uh, the code coming off uh, as we're spinning on the drill. If you don't have any of these tools to hand and you have an old school atomizer or anything like that that will actually screw into the mod and then you can get the other end of the drill, you could use that. Just remember to spin it slowly because the action might actually crush the atomizer depending on what it's actually made from. So to start off, I'm going to take some of the three in one oil and just put it on the threads of this cleaning jig here okay now this is actually worth doing on your mechanical tube mods in general right to keep the thread clean and to keep the conductivity and everything just to work some three in one oil through it every now and again when you feel it's getting dirty so i'm just going to rotate that in and out about three times because basically with the spinning and everything i don't want this uh this connection getting kind of frozen into the threads of the mod so i want it to be nice and lubed up yeah so i'm going to put the uh the jig or the atomizer whatever you're using back into the mod and now i'm going to put it into the drill Okay, so adding a little water. We can see what's come off there. So looking pretty nice. Now to get these um, these lines a bit finer out, that's what I'm going to use the uh, the higher uh, grit for. A bit of the 1500. And to get that nice shine, kind of, I'm moving on to the uh, the 2500 grit now. Okay, so now comes the Brasso. So you get a good. And a little bit goes a long way with Brasso. That's
Now I'm going to give the inside threads a little bit of a polish too. So I'm just going to get a little bit on that. Get my finger in, being safe. So that's helping already. Yeah, so you just keep um, spinning it into the cloth until, until there's nothing coming off, no residue. Not too bad, not too bad. You don't need to, but if you feel the need to clean your button, um, or if I had paint on it, you want to strip that off too. Um, exact same thing. Just uh, get it in. Hopefully you haven't thrown away all the, uh, the wet dry sandpaper you've been using. Get your water back out. little brass over the button and we have a very very shiny button now I could spend much longer at that and get it really nice and nice and nice but you get the idea All right, so let's get rid of the uh, that Brasso smell, the metal polish smell that's going to be on there and stuff. So we're just going to give it a, a wash in some kind of lukewarm water, and I'm using just some washing up liquid or uh, dish soap, as uh, some people call it. Okay, so now we've had it washed, I'm just going to give it a good, good dry out. Looking pretty nice. Done a good job on the threads there as well. Just in case you were wondering why I was putting brass on the inside. Those threads, if you look, look fucking beautiful now as well. Because uh, the brass does act as a, a cleaning agent, not just a polishing agent. So nice and sparkly. So overall, lads, I think yeah, that's looking pretty snazzy. What do you think? Yeah? And there's has the button turned out. You can see, because I kind of leaned on it, I've put a little kind of uh, groove at the side here now, which I much actually prefer. It's nice and it's got a nice rounded feel to it. Oh, I don't think I recorded it, but I washed my hands too. Cheer! 
Um, yeah, oh, I will just say one thing doing this, right? Um, if you're doing this by hand and stuff, right, obviously wear gloves and stuff, but if you're using a, uh, a battery operated drill or a power drill, any kind of drill, and you're doing this cleaning stuff, don't wear gloves. Safety, don't wear gloves. Uh, it's messy, but don't wear them. All right, so uh, just to finish this off, the three in one oil, I'm gonna put it back on this jig here on top, just a little drop, and work it through these threads again. And uh, don't put too much three in one on it. You only want a little bit on the threads. You don't want it to drip inside because uh, it's going to go on the inside wall and get on the battery and all that. So you only want a little bit. Okay. And I'm using the three in one uh, just so that the conductivity. And I'm going to do the same with the button, so button assembly back together. And uh, I didn't polish this, but you can. You can put a bit of brasso on this and uh, just polish the uh, the threading and everything as well. So just in there, in there, it's looking pretty clean. But I'm going to do the threads. Yeah, all looking nice. Right, so to do the threads, three in one oil again, and just a little bit on these dirty bits here. Um, you can also just use some uh, uh, methylated spirits or rubbing alcohol um, on a toothbrush and clean the threads that way if you like. But yeah, just have some on the threads there. I'm gonna work the button in and then work it back. And work it back in. And work it back out. So that three in one. Three in one is also a cutting oil. Um, so it's very, very good for cleaning threads, as is WD-40. So that's a little better looking there. I just get the excess oil in there. I put my finger in and I just turn it, rotate the mod. Yeah, well, I just want a trace of it there. I don't want any of it. And the same here, I'll just spin the button around. Right out of my hands, I'll just spin the button around. It's so shiny and fucking slippery. It's all polished. You can barely hang on to the beckon thing. Now, there you can see I got all the junk out of the, that... Um, out of the threads it does work using the three in one um or a little bit of uh, brass on one i can do it as well so that's the button right but yeah um not too feckin bad if i do say so myself um not a bad job at all you know what i mean considering i don't have a buffing wheel and i don't have any of the you know um the chalk and all that stuff you're meant to use but uh, not a bad job at all uh the top i could have spent more time on but it's never really seen so i'm like yeah Right, so let's get the battery into this fella. Let's get an RDA on top, go back to Vapor, then uh, have a little bit of a chat to send this video out. Sure. Yeah, so not that hard to do. It's pretty easy to do, as you can see. It is just a little, it can be a little bit time consuming depending on the kind of mod. If there's a lot of parts to it, you have to take it apart and all this. An obvious disclaimer, don't ever spin it with the fucking battery inside. That, uh, that's an obvious thing. Uh, take the button out, you know, etc. You can do it with the button on, depending on the kind of configuration of the mod as well. Just make sure the button's out. Don't spin the drill too fast. Um, that's one little thing I will say, because depending on the mod, uh, the 510 can get frozen to it. And then trying to take it off, you can kind of tear the tear or shred the, the threads on the, on the 510 of the mod. So that's it. I'll stop yapping and stuff. Um, you can add the second step of this, right, when I use the Brasso, right? That's the exact same way that I clean my mods regularly. Um, I hit them up with the Brasso, I spin them on the drill, I use the pads. Then afterwards, you're going to have that 
polished smell on it and stuff. It's going to smell horrible. It's going to be all over your hands. You put the batteries in, it's going to smell like brass or two. So um, give them a good wash, you know, just lukewarm water, soap and water, give it a good dry, make sure it's dry. It's good to go with the contacts clean and threads. You'll notice the conductivity change in it as well. So as always, thanks a lot for watching the video. If you liked it, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I think there's a feckin' bell up here now somewhere near where my little face is on the right hand side. Hit that bell and you'll get notifications every time I upload a video. Take care of yourselves. Good luck. And bye-bye.